sneak to co-design. I was sort of thinking about starting to run an organisation, um, but I didn't really want to run an organisation. And then when co-design came along, I started thinking, actually co-design has got a lot in common with us, maybe we do something together. So, we kind of, over the last few months, started to try to get together, and now I'm actually, our projects come underneath co-design, so that's why I'm here. So, similar to all yeah, the other projects. Yeah. Uh, we specialise yeah. in play, and we have a strong belief that play is the beginning of knowledge. It's kind of the, it's, it's how children learn stuff. It's the natural, organic way that they pick up information, experiment with it, and turn it into who they become. It's not just about becoming an adult, but it's actually about becoming a child as well. It's all slow learning process along the way. Next slide. I was trying to think this whole time, how can I make this like next slide thing happen a little less jolty? Um, we designed a build unique play spaces to improve the education, well-being and safety of the world's most disadvantaged children and we support and train others to do the same. So what we started doing was the first bit and what we're starting to do now with co-design is the last sentence. We're really trying to work on a sustainable model where people can do this work themselves using our designs. Next slide. I'd like you to close your eyes, please, for me, and I will be checking. And I would like you to imagine a child for me, and I would like you to imagine a child that is content, that is happy. Now, I'm not an imaginary child, I want you to imagine a real child, someone in your life, a niece, a nephew, one of your own children. If you can't think of anyone, imagine a time where you experience some happiness or contentment. Now there's a good chance that if you, either in the memory you're thinking of right now, or the memories that, you know, you have to think of a few, there's a good chance that two out of three of those, or five out of seven, would be during some sort of play experience. Okay, then open your eyes. Play is such a fundamental part of a child's well-being. Imagine a child that never plays, that never has a chance to play. I, don't, I doubt there would be anyone here who could imagine a child who had that experience or didn't have those experiences and grew up to be a healthy, well-balanced, well-educated child. You would probably worry about that child if you met. Okay, next one. So, two years ago, this is what we started with. This is a 44-gallon drum that someone had, um, was in school. And I don't know if you can see, but this is, these are rusty holes here. And there was a ladder leading up. And the slide that was on the other side has long since gone. So it's like going to the pit of death challenge or something like that. Um, next slide. This is a school. This was sort of a bit of um, sewerage and water from the sink. This is a stinky toilet. And this is where we were um, offered a space to, like the school said we really love to build a playground. This is one of the things that we built. Um, the final space we put a pipe under and get more drainage and other stuff. Next slide. Some of our values um, that we've developed over doing all this stuff is that if we do it, we must use local people. I can even smell it, smell that cigarette. I've got to use the towel. Local materials and local tools. Most of our playgrounds can be built with a hammer and a machine. They're built much faster if we have a power saw and a grinder and some other things, but um, we've deliberately made all of our designs over the last two years work towards that goal of being able to be built by pretty much anyone. Next slide. We've always stuck to a very strong emphasis on environmental um, sustainability as well, so this is just a good example. This steel was recycled rebar out of, a, out of the tip from a concrete slab that had been broken up. And this is obviously a car tire. There is an example of one there, which doesn't actually use any chain at all. That's just two loops of truck, uh, car tire sidewall and a piece of car tire. Next slide. This is how we did it before. We started, I built, I went to a shop and I got built this ridiculously big trailer for my 100cc scooter which I had to put extra long mirrors on so I could see where I was going. It would go very slow and I had quite a few times where I needed to take the trailer off, get someone to pull me up a hill and then keep me on. Um, this is how we started um, and we, I, 
I don't like being a big sort of heavyweight organisation. So after a while, when we were doing playgrounds every two weeks, um, I went to an NGO and I said, "Look, you guys have got tons of cars. Surely you can give me one." And they said, "Yes." So we borrowed a car. We could borrow a car basically any time we wanted from an organisation called World Education Consortium, and the trailer is still there. We just had to put it back in the car. Okay, next slide. So the new phase, that bottom sentence, is this playground ideas. That's our logo. Ignore that part because actually we're not sure if we're called Go Play or Playground Ideas at the moment. We've always been called Go Play, but in Australia there is one small playground company called Go Play and they've trademarked the name, so we may be called Playground Ideas. But I just spoke to them last week and we'll see what happens. So this website will offer people the ability to become a member and through this, they will go to the ideas tab and they will open up safety, pictorial, language free safety, um, safety, like a safety manual. And they can see all the basics that we have in Australia, in the US, in the UK, and all these other places. And they'll be able to just run through it and be able to go, okay, as long as I do all of these things, we'll be pretty right. Um, this has also got advice on how to plan a playground, how to consult with the community, how to build a playground and how to design a playground. We don't, depending on the situation, we, we sometimes do um, planning and um, design for larger things, but often we just, offer, we just offer the advice, they come with a plan, we comment on it briefly, because they're usually pretty good, because they just take bits and pieces of our stuff, um, and then they go off and build them locally. In the design section, you will be able to take, um, you'll be able to find all of our designs. As a user, you'll be able to upload your designs into a experimental section, which, if we think that they're good and safe and, and kosher, they will be put into the design section as well. Um, there will be whole plans and actual individual elements. Um, from there, I'm working with uh, two co-design. Uh, Groupies and another intern from the States where we're um, putting together these step-by-step -step plans. So we do everything in SketchUp, uh, designed in 3D, so people, if people want to actually put it into a space, they can. Um, and then we take those things, we take, kind of take photos of them, and then we put them in these kind of IKEA-style plans. I hope no one works here for IKEA, don't sue me. Uh, but it's kind of, you can imagine that process. So that's the design thing. And the other thing we found, which was really awesome, which I've always wanted to do, but I didn't know how to do it, was I've just found that Google has put together this, um, like, MS Paint kind of a program that you'll be able to actually, for people who can't use SketchUp and those things are too complicated, which a lot of our people who work with can't, they'll be able to take pieces and um, drag and drop little two-dimensional top view icons and design playgrounds and print out and show their community. And they'll be able to upload those to their project. And their project will be just like kind of a Facebook event page kind of thing. That's all I want to talk about. That. This is our octopus icosahedron, which is one of our designs made out of truck tire sidewall, which is sitting on truck tires. Um, and I've just been talking to some Australian playground safety people, and they're actually quite happy with that. This is one of our swing hangers with the motorbike tire over the top to stop it from the wood from rotting with the bolt holes going in. And um, it's using a, this steel piece here is a roller of the roller doors that you see in all over India and Asia, you know, they these sort of big heavy ball bearings. Next slide, please. So, the results of what we've done. Mark Booker built this playground in a place called Kula in northern in the northern Philippines um, in, a, in a coffee growing community that he'd been volunteering at for a long time. This playground was built on the border with a girl named Gao. She had never built a playground before. We sent her some plans. She worked with local builders, and she honestly, I could not pick it from my two years' experience of building playgrounds. I couldn't. The um, it was really excellent. This is a fish box volunteer in Central Thailand. I like the little, they added the Thai motif uh, roof there. Next slide. Um, the other thing we're working on at the moment is a cluster project that will be really quick. Go play, 
trains a project managing in an NGO. This is for bigger projects, 10, 10 playgrounds or more. Next slide. That NGO then builds 10 playgrounds. That playground then services around about 1,000 kids. Um, actually, probably more like 2,000 kids. Um, the average is about 200 kids at school we found. Um, when we do this, when the NGO is being trained, we call and we get them to invite all the other NGOs in the region to come along to that train for free. Along, on the proviso that they can build at least one great playground. They all come along, we train them. This guy builds all his playgrounds, but then we can build up to, say, 50 more playgrounds with all of the other communities that come along. Next slide. Next slide. This is just some stuff we've done. Next slide. Oh, can you go back one slide? This is the this is that thing in reality. Um, these are motorbike tires tied together and up here. There's all sorts of cool stuff I'll take later. Next one. In fact, we have we did our own research. This is the kind of the more dry stuff. Increased children, children attendance, increased, increased concentration. Nine out of ten teachers say that their jobs were easier. Um, they encouraged play between the locals and the refugee kids that are crossing the border. This is done on the Thai Burma border. And we found that teachers began teaching more creatively. They started using the playground as a classroom. They did find shapes was one thing that they told us in maths class. And they did, I love this one, they used it for drama. They ran a Christmas um, nativity scene play, and the cubby house was the main job, which I really like. Next slide. Both teachers and parents reported that children were noticeably happier. And I think that. I sort of passed by this, but my wife is a, works in international community development and stuff. So it stopped me and said, actually, this is not just some Mickey Mouse thing. These kids often come from war situations, they experience torture and trauma, and happiness and contentment is an incredibly strong, we're learning this more and more, it reduces cortisol in your brain, it increases endorphins, and it's an incredibly strong resilience factor in a child's life as they go on. So, this is, we kind of believe it, you know, we don't believe it, but lots of research shows it's quite therapeutic. Next slide. It costs us between, um, we can build a playground for nothing, if they can come with 10 tires, but um, it costs between two and four thousand dollars to build one of these playgrounds. Next slide. Can you play? Just, this, this is a worldwide premiere of this video that we just got sent today. Next slide. Does anybody have any questions?